In 1942, the Japanese planned to invade Ceylon. Operation Ceylon. A devastating Japanese raid on Ceylon was supposed to be the prelude to an invasion, but more cautious counsels prevailed and British India was saved. If Neville Chamberlain had thought Czechoslovakia a faraway country of which we know little, what on earth would he have made of the island of Ceylon? True, today Sri Lanka was a possession of the British Empire, but few in England were losing too much sleep about its fate. There was one exception, however, and he could hardly have been a more important one. In April 1942, after the Japanese bombing of the island's capital, Colombo, Winston Churchill was coming as close as he ever got to panic. The most dangerous moment of the war, he afterwards confided. And the one which caused me the greatest alarm was when the Japanese fleet was heading for Ceylon, and the naval base there. The capture of Ceylon, the consequent control of the Indian Ocean, and the possibility at the same time of a German conquest of Egypt would have closed the ring and the future would have been black. Easter Attack On the 5th of April, Easter Sunday, the Japanese launched a surprise attack on Colombo from the air, much as they had done on Darwin six weeks or so before. A flight of 125 planes, VAL dive bombers and Kate attack bombers with support from Zero fighters took off from aircraft carriers off the coast. Commander Mitsuo Fuchida led the flights, the first fleet with its Kido Butai carrier battle group, some 650 kilometers or 400 miles to the south of Ceylon was directed by Admiral Chiuchi Nagumo. Swooping down out of heavy cloud, the dive bombers began bombarding the city, though the docks were largely protected by a hail of anti-aircraft fire. British hurricane fighters had some success in disrupting the attack, but a second wave arriving a few minutes later was able to rain destruction on the city spread below. Scattered but safe. The raising of Colombo had never been more than a subsidiary objective of an attack whose main aim had been the destruction of the British Eastern Fleet. Some serious hits were certainly scored. The cruisers HMS Cornwall and Dorsetshire were both sunk, while the aircraft carrier HMS Hermes was set ablaze in a follow-up raid a few days later. Britain's fleet, though, was substantially safe at the first intimations of an impending raid. It had fled for the East African coast. Its dignity might now be in tatters, but it was physically intact and in a position to fight another day. Devastating as it had been for Colombo, the raid had failed in its primary purpose. Now, those who had conceived it had to submit to seeing their ambitious plans scaled down. It was Australia all over again. The army refused to get involved in what its generals saw as a grandiose scheme that would outstretch their scant resources. They had to consolidate the gains they had already made. 